it's become very normalized. And that's one of the problems that I see with lameness, all lameness, but especially with digital dermatitis and lack of maintenance in foot bath and maintenance trimming, but especially foot bath because it's a little bit of extra work, but it's just become normalized. And, and I've heard so many farmers say, uh, you know, well, it's, it's normal to have this many warts, right? It might be normal in some places, but it shouldn't be acceptable. It's completely preventable. And I think that's the, the problem is normalization of a problem. And, uh, and, and on top of this, we'll go into it is, uh, <laughs> trimming cows like Aaron and I have for many years and, and then running foot baths on top of it. I've actually found that controlling dermatitis is probably one of the easiest things on the dairy, but yet is done wrong more. Yes. And probably one of the most valuable things cost per, per cow. The, the, the return on investment with a foot bath is probably one of the highest returns on investment on a whole dairy. Factors for better hoof health, healthy, comfortable cows, hygiene, hygiene being the stalls and walkways, nutrition, um, nutrition changes. I'm sure Chip, you would agree that one of the biggest um, hardships as a hoof trimmer is uh, a, a immediate nutrition change, a, a big change all at once that, that affects the um, hoof horn production and it limits the hoof trimmer's ability to take, do, the, do what we want to do. Cow comfort, cows need to lay down. Uh, they need to lay down and, and be happy. They won't lay down if the stall's not comfortable. And if they don't lay down, then they're on their feet. Impacts us hoof trimmers again. Number of stalls per cow and the size of stalls. Chip, you want to say anything about this? Chip's gone. Um, <laughs> reduce... Reducing stress. Um, again, if anybody has any questions as we go along about these things, um, I'm watching the, the chat meeting comments as well. But reducing stress and stress is one of the things that is, again, as a hoof trimmer that I, I really notice an impact in the hooves with from stress, from all, all the stresses, temperature, heat stress, that's probably one of the biggest ones for us where where I live and we even with good ventilation and good air quality sometimes it's just hot air blowing on you and it's going to impact the cows employees and handling is a, a huge one um, I've seen many places where the cows will just walk walk right up to you. They're very comfortable around people. And other places where the cows are very skittish, cow handling is really important um, to help control stress. And equipment and flooring. Flooring is huge because cows that are, are not uh, confident in their strides are not going to take good steps. They're going to wear differently. They're going to maybe walk to the water less, they're gonna walk to the feed bunk less, and the chances of slipping and becoming injured are, are increased then. Yes, sorry about that, Aaron. I had, uh, I had a couple coughs coming up, so I might, my, you know, I, I knew to no mute myself. But anyhow, you're, you're absolutely correct on that as far as the flooring and stuff, the grip is how's the cows gonna get up and down. If you look at the stalls here, you'll see it looks like a sand bedding. Cows are very comfortable laying there. And this is huge because if the cows cannot get off their feet, that means they're standing more. Standing more means more stress on them. It's very difficult. It, it, as a hoof trimmer, you only have so much control that you can actually do. If you do not have good feet coming, growing out of the hoof, you cannot make good feet. So you need something good. Let these cows get a good healthy foot just to be able to do a good job of trimming. And if there's any questions on this here part, we can, uh, uh, you know, write them down. This way we can get them in and we'll talk about it afterwards. The bud flow also to the hoof. 
which is important in fighting infection and it's important in fighting or, or in producing quality hoof horn. When a cow is standing and she's not walking, she's not pumping the blood in her feet, in her hooves. When a cow is laying down, there's no pressure on the hooves. It makes it much easier for the heart to pump blood all the way to the farthest part of the cow from the heart. And so when a cow is laying down, they're going to have a much easier, consistent, steady blood flow to the hoof, helping prevent yes. infections and to produce quality hoof horn. But a cow that just standing by a stall looking at it that won't lay in it is not pumping blood. She's crushing her corium and it's going to be at a higher risk of weight bearing lesions as well as infectious lesions because Staying in the urine. fresh blood, the there's not going to be the immune system to fight. So let's look at the factors for better hoof health. You know, hoof care, foot baths, hoof care, prevent and control digital dermatitis. When we talk about running foot baths, basically we are running these to prevent and control dermatitis and prevent hoof rot. That is the main reason we run our foot baths. We recognize it's a treatment for lameness. It is important to recognize that when the lameness is present, we need to identify the root cause and treat it. Research shows lameness reduces productivity at a peak yield up to 20% at an estimated cost of $350 to $800 per case. And you say, well, how can lameness cause that much? Well, it's been, it's been re researched and researched on what lameness actually costs. Number one, you can't always put the cost on lost milk. It's there, but you can't put it. Well, what about your breeding? What about the cows that you call? Yes, this one might come through and it might be a $50 fix, but the next one you end up losing that cow and you spend $2,500 or whatever the cost is to raise it to breed. And then you turn around and you have to call this cow at a minimal dollar. Usually when they get lame, they lose weight. That means you get less. And then sometimes you can't even take them to the auction or to the to the slaughterhouse if this cow does go lame. I think these numbers too are also, it's, it's per lactation and it doesn't even, you can't even measure long-term impact of something like that. A cow that maybe was lame, came up with a DA, that's milk production 350 to 800. The cow that was lame got a DA maybe through her calf winds up being called because of it that maybe would have been a great cow that and heifer had a heifer and that heifers heifers and down the road the cost I mean it's astronomical the, the the ripple effect and I think these numbers are really just the lactation not counting future lactations and future offspring of these cows that are impacted. And DD changes the, the, the stride of the cow. So if she's walking a little more on her toe, she wears her toe thin. Next thing you know, you're creating sole ulcers, you're creating white lines and also toe lesions. And, and basically what it's going to come back to is, is you are damaging the corium of that cow. And then you're going to have the bone structure that is, is, is gets all coarse and it shortens that cow's life. So there's a many factors that add up to why it costs so much. And the reason we would want to run foot baths and take care and recognize what type of lameness is going on on a dairy. Non-infectious injuries, um, uh, overgrowth that does cause pain. Cows may have overstretched ligaments or their toes, the, the bone structure in, the, in each claw, which leads to ulcers and and cracks um uh, heel horn erosion and upper or non-hoof injuries um big, like a stifle injury can cause the cow to go lame but it's not a foot injury simply an injury uh i i know that i've seen in my career lots of cows that maybe would slip are from something like digital dermatitis as well because they're not they're not confident with their strides and they're, they're favoring one foot because of digital dermatitis. And when they turn or something, they're just uh, more at risk of, of falling and, and hurting themselves with a stifle. And then we have infectious lesions, most commonly digital dermatitis or foot rot. Yep. 
that and and we're going to highlight the infectious lesions because when we're talking about running foot baths uh, we're not running foot baths for ulcers or white lights basically we are running foot baths for infectious lesions and i would like to think that uh, digital dermatitis is your most common because if it's foot rot then there's a lot of other issues going on there but digital dermatitis is what we're going to focus on but we do need to control foot rot with your bath also so our concentration today is going to be on infectious lesions Digital dermatitis, it's infectious. It's painful lesions on the soft tissue between the claws and the heel, although occasionally occurs on other soft parts of the foot. Depending on the severity, cows often walk tenderly on the affected hooves. The common causes is lack of proper preventative, remember that, preventative foot bath routine. Proper. Yes, proper in, in, in uh, routine. Them are two huge words when it comes to foot bathing. How, how many times in your career have you seen um, farmers running a foot bath and still having an unacceptable amount of infectious lesions? Tremendous amount. Because it's not proper. It needs to be calculated and managed. Protocol. The protocol is huge. You'll see a lot of products has been in and out and stuff. And when you're dealing with someone with products, no matter what the product is, someone needs to know how that product works. And, and without the right amount of product going into a foot bath and changing it when it needs to be changed and making sure, you know, everything else is set up as far as the alleyways in front of it and behind it, that foot bath might be causing you more harm than it is good. So them are things that need to be known. Finding someone that knows how to run your foot bath and knowing what how to run the product properly recognizing recognizing what part of the next point pro, more prominent and poor hygienic conditions and house dairy herds mm -hmm. every farm has got to have a different need because of the the hygiene level the moisture level the stress level uh, every farm there i get so many phone calls are we running enough copper are we running enough humex are we what, whatever they're running, it needs to be calculated according to their needs. Uh, we have specs, but in my experience, everybody's got a little different level of, of uh, you know, calculations. Absolutely, because you got to add different things into it. So, so if you're running an alley scraper, you're bringing down a, a, a small pond of manure that is caking around the dew claws and stuff. It's going to take a little bit more foot bathing. Or if you got an overcrowded barn area and and the stress level, summertime, you know, you got the heat and you got sprinklers running, cows' feet are wetter. So there's a lot of different things. It's like there's no one protocol that works, no matter what the product is. I can go to a dairy that might be running 25 pounds of copper or a 3% heel max. They still might have to run that at a heavier and more days than the average day where I can get by on other dairies that things are great. The cows got all comfortable stalls. The alleyways are clean. Cows are very comfortable. Stress levels down. Basically, we can get by with less foot bathing and have Just very like good in people, Stress mm -hmm. impacts immunity higher it's stress it's gonna it's gonna compromise the immune system and the body's ability to fight back these bacteria. digital dermatitis common remedies individual cases with the symptoms of digital digital dermatitis should have their feet lifted examined and treated topically but prevention is ultimate the ultimate goal return routine foot baths or proper topical spray foam routine and heifers and dry cows and the milking cows that so, is huge the heifers and dry cows i see that so much to where the cow farm is doing a great job on their foot bath but their fresh cows whether they be 14 days fresh as a heifer or 14 days fresh as a dry cow and that lactation is never going to be what it should have been. And, and the nice thing about, you know, when Aaron was talking about running for the heifers and the dry cows is because dermatitis, once we get it, it doesn't go away. The foot baths control it. And that's that's important to learn and say, well, I've got a product that gets rid of dermatitis. 
Mm, I don't believe that. It's not, I've never seen it. So basically what we do is we control it. So we're able to control the dermatitis. And, and basically as long as you run it, your foot bath, you're able to control it. By doing that, if you decide to, to uh, dry your cows off 30, 45 days, basically you're gonna have dermatitis come back in if you're not running a dry or a foot bath routine in them dry cows. Same thing with heifers. If you can control your heifers all the way up through, chances of them doing so much better as a cow are a lot better because if you're going to let them get infected with a lot of dermatitis and then think you're going to clear it up in your milking herd it's going to be a battle so it's very important this whole prevention of starting them when they're young is heifers and dry cows makes life a lot easier for these cows and a dairyman if you can just keep it control right from the start yes both rot flegman is uh redness tissue uh, above the hoof, the, between the rear claws. Um, it can be actually in any foot, but acute swelling of interdigital tissues and around the hairline. Uh, a fever can be pregnant because there isn't a, an actual infection in the body. Foul smelling discharge. Hoof rot is the loss of the battle between bacteria and the body's immune system in the tissue. So again, going back to what I had mentioned before, where cows are laying down or walking, the blood flow with that carries the immune immunities stays fresh in the feet. But cows that are lame and don't step on their foot properly, let's say lame because of dermatitis, they're going to have less immunity in their in that foot and chance of bacteria winning the battle with the immune system is much higher. Cows that's walking properly, way less chance of bacteria beating the immune system in the foot. And, and it's, it's very, you know, what, what you were getting at with the blood flow and stuff, you think about the cow's feet and stuff and, and the foot rot, basically um, it's your pore circulation in the cow. So, that's something that's important to be able to keep the cow up and moving, but yet when she gets her rest, she can get good circulation to help heal. And uh, foot rot is something that gets penetrated on the interdigital. It seals over, next thing you know, infection. So that's something that is treated a little bit different than dermatitis. Uh, you kind of want to leave that more open. Um, that's a product, you know, something that I prefer not to seal up. So you got to be careful of what products you're using on that. Um, I think the last research showed that iodine, I know that they were using it as a 7%, which I find to be way too strong for that, um, uh, actually caused more damage. So there's still a lot of research going on. Uh, one of the best things I found for foot rot, you know, you want to treat it, you need a vet to do that, but you want to treat antibiotics, but also I always found that soak in the foot seemed to work very well. So you have to be careful. It's nothing you want to wrap up with copper sulfate or anything because that's probably the worst thing you can do. So well, like you and, said, Chip, getting the vet involved. Once there's an infection yes. and it's into the tissue and it's outside of the hoof, it's a, you know, it's, it's beyond the hoof, that's where we have to kind of step back. The best thing the, the hoof trimmer can do is um, anything we can to prevent it. Prevention yes. is, you know, the, the best part if you you know doing everything properly it should be pretty rare to see the hoof rots yes exactly yeah, soaking yeah. with epsom salt yeah. that's something as a hoof trimmer we can recommend and very helpful i've seen veterinarians do things to reduce pain and inflammation sure things that they prescribed and seen very very good results come from those type of things but reducing pain and inflammation is going to increase blood flow because once the inflammation in the foot's gone, the blood's going to flow there easily. And once the pain's gone, the cow is going to help pump the blood from the heart to the hoof back to the heart. Yeah, simple things like, you know, aspirin to help circulation. Uh, vet give it lanocaine basically to relieve the pain so the cow can get up and move around, which creates circulation. It's all those small things that actually can save that cow's life because foot rot can kill a cow pretty quickly. A lot of times, once it's got that's hold, uh, uh, there's not much us as hoof trimmers can do. It's, it's an infection on the inside and needs to be taken care of. 
um, the, the infection treated. Purpose of foot bath. What are the most important functions of the foot bath? To prevent chronic digital dermatitis from becoming active, aid in healing some active digital dermatitis, helps prevent foot rot because all lameness leads or, or helps go towards foot rot because of the blood flow. But it does not harden the hoof. Uh, I've seen that as a, as a very misconceived notion that a lot of people is, you know, copper or this or that hardens the hoof. Um, it's the environment that the hoof is in. It involves the dehydrating of cells. The hoof hardness is the, from the dehydrating of cells. It's moisture content in the hoof itself. Yeah. Um, so trimming this many years, for, for years we trimmed a lot of stanchion cows. Stanchion cows in the wintertime stand in there in a very dry environment. Feet would be just like concrete. Yes. All I had to do was stick them out in the pasture for a little bit. Once the spring came around, the morning dew would soften the hoof up. So it was a lot easier to work with. So to think you're gonna put your foot bath up and harden up your hooves is, is, uh, is a very, very, far-fetched difficult thing to depend on as far as hardening. Think about maybe cleaning the alleyways or a little bit drier drier area for the cows to stand in. That will that will harden exactly. up. Exactly. Reducing reducing the moisture level or moisture. the depth of it. Cleaning I've I've said that to farmers before that said, oh this product's supposed to harden hooves. No, clean your alleys a little more frequently will have a bigger impact than definitely anything that's sitting on the top of that outer shell. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll see a lot of softer feet in the summertime. Uh, sprinkler systems running, cows are in more moisture. They absorb the moisture. So also, I I haven't, some of the, the lowest lameness and highest milk production herds that I have, um, the, the hooves aren't real hard. Soft and hard doesn't really mean a whole lot. Healthy is the goal. Healthy exactly. and controlling infections maintenance and trimming and maintenance in the foot bath controlling infections is way more important than the hardness one of the yes. birds i've ever seen has rock hard feet yep. and probably my best lameness herd it, with the the least is the feet are fairly soft but they are they're on their maintenance and they're on their foot bath I, I think one of the things, Aaron, is they look at and soft feet and stuff and trying to harden them up is these cows because these these dairies in the barns um, have expanded so far. The cows are walking such a large distance and we're talking about the walking surface and they're wear because they're actually wearing off more than they're growing. And that's where they say, well, I want to harden it up. Well, actually, if you look at a hoof, uh, the harder hoof actually shells off faster than a softer hoof. If you think about where cows went into the free stalls, moving in, the reason that they were able to grow such a thicker sole was the moisture in the hoof, and it didn't wear quite as fast. So there's a little bit of of a misunderstanding of, of how a hoof wears and talk about hardening. Maybe you want to look at your surface more than you want to look at the hardening of the hoof. Okay. And if anybody has any questions on it, just you know put it down in the chat, and we'll we'll get to that a little bit later. Hoof bath products historically, if we look at it, the two main products have been run for years, formaldehyde, copper sulfate, and they both got their own special things. But if we just touch base here on, on your formaldehyde real quick, you know, it's got the antibiotic, you know, your strong antibacterial properties, your cross links, your pros, it's, it's an inexpensive. It's, uh, it has quick results and it's biodegradable. So that them are the positives of formaldehyde. But then you got to weigh out the cats. It's, it's a very dangerous carcinogen. It's corrosive. Um, you know, when we look at health wise, it's, 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 it's very bad for you. But what I see often on these dairies is, is your overexposure, your burns. Um, formaldehyde is not a foot bath product that you would want. Actually, formaldehyde is not even a registered foot bath product. It is not. You'll see, you won't see foot bath products listed on formaldehyde or else you should not ever see it listed on, on formaldehydes. But overexposure burns. Um, something you want to be very careful, especially if you're doing like in a, in a free flow foot bath. 
I've seen this over and over where they set it up in their heifer barns and they free flow back and forth across and them heifers are burnt terrible because they stand in it too long. Your vapor pressure, another thing is a calm, is, is hot temperatures that evaporates extremely quick or in cold temperatures. Basically what happens is it sits there, it still stinks, but it's, it's dormant. It's not very active. So you, you're getting a foot bath that's not doing a whole lot for you. You want to go over copper? Go ahead. Very, the, the temperature that it becomes inactive is not very cold for especially us living in the Midwest. There's a great portion of the year that mm -hmm. it becomes it separates from the water and isn't doesn't provide any benefit. Yeah. The other thing is with cons of formaldehyde is we also are living in a world where employee welfare is and employee safety is very important especially on the larger farms um, where they're, they're looked at a lot more than other farms. So that's something that needs to be considered as well. People handling and what they're handling and how it's handled. Um, and, and, and so we talk about the formaldehyde of how tough it is on, 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 on us physically and, um, and the exposures of the burns and stuff. But if you go back to copper sulfate, Copper sulfate's been around for years and years and years, you know, and it's got his pros. It does work on DD. It's really worked well on, on, on hoof rot. It's something that can be used in organic dairies. But if you look at the cons of it, basically it binds up manure fairly quickly. So we got to use an extender on it, which would be an acidifier. Uh, how many times, Marin, have you turned around and come across where someone's just mixed up to foot bath and you go and they empty it out and the pile of copper sulfate still sitting in the same spot that they used it? Good so thing. then they're shoveling it out. Perfectly good copper sulfate. I right heard on. you say that. I assumed you meant ginger. Ginger, your microphone's on. Um, yeah, I've seen that so many times and where farms. Um, you know, or, or the the employees have to spend so much time trying to get their copper dissolved in. And they, you know, I, they hate it. They're like, oh, we gotta sit here and try to get it. And it doesn't wanna, you know, cause there's not enough water in it yet. And um, I mean, copper will work, but it's expensive and it takes a lot more effort than, um, you know a lot of of other products and it's it's got a it's got a huge negative environmental impact too so if you're looking at uh, where the future formaldehyde in uh, copper sulfate is it's 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 dwindling um, many parts of europe uh there's many parts in the u.s that they do not want to use copper sulfate on their land at all because of the the buildup of copper the other thing that you got to look at is um, the handling of it and in the dust. You know, if you guys have used it, anybody knows it's used copper sulfate. Basically, it is terrible stuff to breathe in. So let's. You can't dump a bag and escape the cloud. It's faster than no. it's faster than you you can breathe. And what to go back to the land that you just mentioned, for example, mm -hmm. I have a a really good farm that switched off the copper to. Heel Max, and he told me, he says, as a good steward of the land, I feel like we're doing a bad thing by putting this copper on the ground. Mm -hmm. And he says, um, but I have to take care of my cows. And we, we've we changed products and they're having wonderful results. But the, as a good steward of the land, I think that's an important thing that we have to consider. Yep. Yes. And you're seeing that there's been more and more studies done at these universities on, on uh, impact of formaldehyde and copper sulfate and so we'll go into this a little bit further but uh, there's many of the universities that will not use copper sulfate or formaldehyde so there's alternatives out there now and uh, let's move forward and we'll uh, we'll start talking about some of them alternatives so let's go into the agrichem hoof care products so we're going to start out here. Here's the perfect example of a university that will about a year and a half ago, they uh, went away from copper sulfate and they would not use formaldehyde. So they started on our heel max. So this was a perfect university for setting up and doing a research project with heel max. And um, 
this heel max and it was with you know compared to a fairly heavy portion of copper sulfate and the objective of this study is to determine heel max is non inferior to copper sulfate in a control in a control of new cases of digital dermatitis over a four month period I like to say about something about the non inferior part too that um Sure. A lot. Somebody had mentioned that to me, saying, "Oh, it didn't say it was better; it just said it was not inferior." And that's a very powerful word because copper sulfate works too, and it can also not work. It's it depends on how it's ran, being ran properly, which the study shows that non inferior means you know that it will work. Yes, run properly yes. like copper. The, everything is you know up for you know needing to be used properly i'll let you talk about the study though chip because this is more years well it was uh when we, we we started laying out this study basically we, we wanted to do not just a plain two or three hundred count study we did this with with uh over six thousand counts so it's probably i'm sure in fact i know it's the largest foot mass study ever done so we used five herds well, they range from 1,323 to 2,292 cows per herd. All like all of the lactating cows were enrolled. Treatments applied at the pen level. Cows evaluated every two weeks with the M stage system, and and we'll go in further to the M stage system coming up. Cows treated according to the standard of the farm treatment protocol. So this went on for many weeks. I believe it was 16 weeks. Uh, in in, in this was not a simple study by any means. Uh, basically, can you can you elaborate on the treatment supplied at the pen level? Yes, basically we we did not just do this barn and this barn of this. Basically, we switched from group to group with different products and different foot baths. So every cow was 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 examined before the study started, and then we went on and then every. So it, it, we balanced everything out for each herd so in, in each that. pen, and then we seen the, the starting effects and then the finished effects. So. Yeah, that's important that it was apples to apples. Yes, yes. All right. So here we talked a little bit about the M stage and, and, and basically this is how long has M stage been around? Six, seven, eight years? Yeah. And it's and it's gone on and they've actually added a few more. And it's like, okay, let's try to make this a little more confusing. But this is how you measure where dermatitis is at, where it's going to the next stage, and then where it's gonna go on to, depending on if it's treated or not treated correctly. All right. So basically you got your MOs, which is gonna show no dermatitis. And then you're going to turn around and then we're going to talk about, you know, your, your your M1s, your M2s. And you can see, I know the picture's a little bit small, but it's like ulcer-like lesions. And then you get into your hyperkeratosis and you still got your little ulcer-like lesions. And then you go into your proliferation and then you see that your ulcer, they're scabbing up and, and, they're, and they're scabbing over. And then you'll see eventually that it comes back to the M2 piece. So we're trying to get these M4s and stuff, or the, the M2s back to the M4s. And I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but this is how you do this with foot bath control and topical treatments. Because exactly. If, the, it, if you look at how confusing to the to the right is, and look at how simple to the left is with no mm -hmm. MO, let's stay there. Let's just yeah. control it and not get in the not have all of these different m's and yeah uh, and it is it's so doable that's just where so many people think that it or farms think that it's acceptable and it really is not necessary and that's where we go back to the foot bathing preventative because when you get into these stages it's going to keep coming back it's going to yeah. keep coming back so that's where we need to to prevent foot bath or foot you know digital dermatitis right from the start And here's part of the your non inferiority study. You know, you had a margin of 25%. So when we talk about uh, 
you know, how much hill maps was used, how much copper was used, if, if you think about it. So they wanted it done all on automated systems. So we used a liquid copper and you say, well, liquid copper, you know, you think about liquid copper to get, say, a 50 gallon bath, 50 gallon bath, liquid copper, basically it's all done by weight. So it takes about 20 pounds of liquid copper to get to that percentage of 5%. So 20 gallons, and that's at a 20%, which is a high rate, because you're going to see most liquid coppers are going to range from a 12 to a 18%. Um, we're used to 20%. So in doing so, we had to use 10 gallons. So the copper foot bath probably cost two and a half to three times as much as the heel max foot bath did to have equal results. I don't know anybody that can spend the kind of money on a foot bath that we spent with liquid copper to compare with this. I know the dairy won't do it. So if there's any questions on that, we'll make sure to answer you, guys, that you made sure the, the proper amount is was in there and you have to, mm -hmm. to automatically run that much copper is even though it's still it's more economical than dermatitis, but there's way better options. Yes. Foot bath benefits the most common herd level control method for DD on dairies. Um, is, this is really where it should be is in the in the prevention and keeping a hostile environment for bacteria on the hoof, the chemical retained on the hoof. That's one thing that I notice a lot of misconception in the industry is it's not about multiple dunks or standing in it it's about the product retained on the hoof so if if the cows are walking right back in you know cleanliness before and after the foot bath has a huge impact of that foot bath working and i've had farms struggling with their foot bath check out their parameters everything is good and get them to clean before and after the 25 30 feet just so the the cows have a little time for the the product to to settle into the skin or to, or to settle on the skin have mm -hmm. have way better results just with doing that to uh, assist the foot bath in working properly at product retention okay yeah, i think you covered that pretty good heel max so our foot bath protocols, basically heel max, two and a half percent, or we used copper sulfate at five percent. Liquid products, automatic dispensers. We touched on this a slight bit. Four First project we ran four consecutive week. days a week. Very, I think it's very important running your consecutive days a week. Foot bath was changed every one to three pens. It was between two hundred and four hundred cows, depending on the dairy. All right, and you can see to the right here, here's all the systems that was set up, not all just one system set up. And basically we ran one system for, for copper. We ran one system for the heel max. So they all had their own systems to run the product. So everything was done properly. So we did not want to leave this to the human usage because it varies. The water level would be different from bath to bath. The amount of product going in would be different from bath to bath. So we set this up on all automated systems. So everything was done consistent. We wanted the most accurate results we could possibly come up. So here are some of the stats that we started out with. And uh, so the number of cows, you know, it was very similar. You'll look at the parity, very similar. Days in milk, we are extremely close in days in milk and mature equivalent and, and, and milk yield. So basically you can see that we balanced everything out from group to group to make this the most balanced project that we can we can come up with for the research. And we wanted the best results of, of, the, of the Ferris and uh, what we can come up with. And you can see all the five different farms we used in comparisons on the heel max to the copper sulfate of MOs. OK, so we had no lesions. We turn around and you can see how balanced out it came. All right, we started out in. So leg, you know, the, the 
the level of incidences on the dairy. You can come across and see how close they came back and forth. It went up by one or two from one to the other, but you could see from dairy to dairy, they ran equivalent. So here, here's another, another thing where it came up on your non-inferior to copper sulfate. So basically we're within a 0.25% at the end results. So, so well, I mean, I can jump oh, in. Okay. How can our hoof bath chemicals help? Uh, can I give this dairy equivalent or better results? And that's something that Chip has, um, you know, taught me when I when I first started working with foot baths with him is we need to get equivalent or better results. We need to improve something, but controlling di digital dermatitis and preventing hoof rot. Can I make it safer and more convenient? And again, going back to the the direction the industry is going with larger dairies, safety is very important. Personnel safety, very important. And convenience is very important because the larger dairies or just the, the moving forward and, and evolving um, time is money and convenient is equals money. Uh, one product instead of two. I know that that, that reduces some convenience now all, all the way to the, to whoever's doing the billing, keeping track of how much products in both different, um, containers and then ordering, um, can I save this dairy money? Hoof bath cost, trimming bill, labor, loss of production. Um, I'd move loss of production to the top because that's more than the hoof bath cost and the trimming bill put together. Loss of production is probably quadruple the hoof trimming bill and the hoof bath cost. And uh, there's also loss of cows trimmed at the right time because there's cows brought in for lameness or being lame with digital dermatitis and taking the place of maybe a cow that should have just got a maintenance trim and stayed on the top of her game. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, so when I go into a dairy and I wanna look at uh, their foot bathing stuff, basically I, I'm gonna look at uh, convenience and labor is gonna be my number one thing I look at because if I see that there's some issues going on, that tells me it's usually a labor issue. And the fact is, uh, is this foot bath pretty tough to set up? Does it get changed? So say these guys got to drag these foot baths down an alleyway, or if they've got to flip them over and wash them out. And sometimes it's very difficult to find a time or the desire to do that while you're milking cows, because you might have to change this foot bath during the milking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit there and say, how can I make this so that they have no issues doing it? And then if I can get them to do it, at a much easier strain on them, then they're gonna find out it gets done better and then I have better results. Getting it done easier, making sure it's done correctly, gives you better results every time. And saving the money dairy, or the dairy some money is, is important, but you're saving them money if you're getting better results and you're keeping your foot bath cost equivalent or less. And that all can be done because it's, it's they just need someone to come in that knows what you're doing to set things up and have it set up properly for that dairy because there's no one set protocol for every dairy all right heal max foot bath concentrate it's a patented concentrate with the same mechanisms of healing as formaldehyde with less danger so we have scabbing agents your traditional 40 gallon bath is 200 cow passes usage is four to seven consecutive baths a week. So heal max is a product. I like to run four days a week. When I see two to 3% solution, so it depends on where I'm at in, in, a, in here in the US. Basically, if I go in the, in the southern states, I'm going to be running at a 2%, maybe even a slight bit less at dairies because the environment's a lot different. If I come in a northern part of the country here, if I'm in New York or Michigan, or Wisconsin, Minnesota, I'm going to be running probably at a 3%. Even in Canada, we run at a 3% solution in Canada. It's just a different environment 
barns are closed in more. There's more ammonia in the barns on the floor level. So we have to run at different levels. So depending on your environment is what kind of, of, of ratio I'm going to run. Uh, the benefits of uh, the Helmax is safety. It maintains effectiveness in the presence of organic matter. That means it holds up a lot better. Formaldehyde breaks down very quickly. All right. Copper sulfate binds up in manure and stuff. So basically it holds up a lot better. And now if you take it right, we say visual cues if the protocol is being followed. So if you look to the right, you'll see that there's cows here and they've got a stain on their feet, just kind of orangish brown right above the right in the hairline. If someone says they're running heel max, I can walk in and I can tell right away whether they're following a protocol by the staining on the feet, which makes it really nice visually to walk in and see if things are done correctly or not. Somewhat correctly, I should say. It's biodegradable. It's effective in both hot and cold weather because it has a low vapor pressure. Going well, back to biodegradable, it's important that it, it doesn't harm the, the land, our environment. Yes, very much so. Uh, and effective in both hot and cold, Wisconsin, where I live, that's very important because we got the extreme on both ends. Yeah, Florida, that's what I run a lot of down there because it's so hot, formaldehyde evaporates very quickly. So we find it very convenient and cost wise to run hill max down there because of uh, the fact is it holds up a lot longer. They don't have to keep changing your foot bath. And, you know, we say about it being highly concentrated. <coughs> means you use less product. It means your shipping costs are down. So them are things you need to look at. And if you yeah. talk about robot barns, which we're going to be getting into next month more robot barns, this is an excellent product for robot barns. Number one, it holds up well. You can adjust it a lot easier so you don't have to worry about the scalding, the burning, the formaldehyde will cause. So them are things you need to look at if you're going to be looking at heel max. Them are things that are, makes it really nice. You go ahead, Aaron, do the CU. Um, heel max CU is the same patented concentration with the addition of copper sulfate and hoof max. So we have, a, we have our cat scabbing agent. Um, we have copper sulfate included the um, traditional 40 gallon bath or 200 cows passes usage four to seven consecutive baths per week and i think that's really important four to seven the the industry is starting to see the the more consistent or the more frequency you can run less less product more frequency and we're having a lot better results that way and then what I'm seeing is the trend is more frequency. Um, but eight to 10% solution pros is uh, the safety. It, it's again, we're, we're, we still have some, some copper sulfate involved without having to dump bags and create that dust. Um, and we don't have formaldehyde involved, uh, maintains effectiveness, even in the presence of organic matter so it's it still stays stronger in the manure than regular copper would because we have our heel max involved um visual cues if the protocol is being followed chip had mentioned on the last slide uh, the the brown brown colored feet and uh, for example one of my one of my best farms has is running heel max and and they brought us a cow a few weeks ago and and she did have um, a, a lesion, but her feet were not brown. And I knew immediately that this cow was not from the, the maintenance cows. Somehow she was not getting the foot bath. And uh, after checking with the farmer, it was correct. She had spent some extra time in a separated pen because of, of medical issues she was having. Uh, because we're dealing with liquid again, we got the use of um the use of the foot bath dosing system for a premium bath at a low cost per cow pass convenience using the the system it's concentrated so again we're using um less product less ordering and then um low copper levels so we do still have some copper retained on the skin but not as high of a level as what we were putting on the ground before 
It's a, it's a very good overall product as far as is uh, trying to run something that's not a formaldehyde product and not a heavy copper product. So we have our Helmax taking care of our digital dermatitis and we have enough copper in there to control our, our foot rot at a decent level. Doesn't take a lot of copper to control foot rot. It takes a lot of copper to control dermatitis. It takes a lot of copper to, to, to mix into a bath properly. Correct. About our topicals, our Helmax spray. It's a fast acting topical antiseptic formulated with a special gel to cling to the problem area. Requires just two to three applications on the same day or consecutive days. For operations using foot baths, Helmax spray can also be used for severe cases that require extra attention. So this is something you want to do in the parlor. You keep it in there or your, your, your pen and uh, spray topically. It's something that should be done a few days in a row. Um, I don't think there's any spray that you spray on one time and it's going to get rid of dermatitis. It's uh, you're asking too much of anything. So basically this is something you'd want to hit uh, a couple days in a row and uh, that's going to give you your best results. It works very well. Uh, we've got a lot of people that just absolutely love this product because they're able to control their dermatitis in certain times of year, you know. There's when a lot of time in the winter we can't run the foot back just because of icy conditions. Correct. Or what farm of mine this winter's water line to the foot bath busted. And this is this is what they did to control their dermatitis. And actually they they had been on and off a little bit with the foot bath because of icy conditions and then the water line busted and they were having a lot of cases of dermatitis and they told me do whatever you gotta do. So I got them some Helmax spray and even well, not the most convenient not you know replacing a foot bath but theirs didn't work wiped out their dermatitis the in 10 days there was no more cases because of the parlor spraying the, the feet it was very effective so let's go into the foam so basically this is a product and uh, you'll see the foamers right there so and with a, the showing right there, it has a short handles, but you can put extended handles on there, so three or four feet. So this is an excellent product. So if you want to lock up your heifers and you don't have a good spot to roll, you know, run your foot bath. I have guys that lock up their heifers when they're checking them and they just walk behind them with this long wand and, and foam up. The nice thing about the foam is it's very visual. You can see it. You can see where it's at, what's getting, you know, how it's sticking on there. Um, it's a nice product to use. We have guys that use this and, and set it up in rotary parlors and regular parlors, and uh, they love it because of the visual part. You get your same action as your heel max, just the whole visual thing lets people see, you know, what they're accomplishing and where the product itself is. Well, again, like like the the, the whole goal of the foot bath is product retention, leaving a hostile environment for bacteria, um, of environment that. That bacteria can't live in in this foam is a per this picture is a perfect example of product retention we're putting it right there so um we're going to have a very hostile environment for the bacteria but not one that's hurting the the cow skin dry cows heifers also can be applied during feeding with animals and headlocks or the tie stall barns the tie stall barns have a really hard time running the foot bath usually and this works very well in the tight stall barns. And like I said, with the longer handle, it's actually very convenient to do it. Yes. Your paste, basically this is designed for hoof trimmers. Uh, so a few years ago, tetracycline became very difficult and pretty much illegal to use. So we came up with this product and it's worked extremely well uh, as a topical paste. It's something, there's no antibi antibiotics in the product. You don't have to worry about withholding milk. It's not painful like putting copper sulfate directly onto it. It's much safer than formaldehyde. Works well with or without wrapping your dermatitis. And we use it both ways. Um, a lot of trimmers love this product. It works very well. It's something that you can put your paste on and actually get results in a one-time application. There's very few products you can do that. This is one of them. I found it to be very comparable to use in a tetracycline paste. Again, it's very it's important to stay away from antibiotics. Yes, it is. Your hoof mix. The original 
I'll take this one, Chip. The original sure. additive design to optimize foot baths based on copper or zinc sulfate to keep copper active. It enables the copper to continue working even after the bath is heavily loaded with manure and urine, allowing you to change the bath less frequency or use using less copper because we've increased the, the um, ability for the copper suspension and usability. Traditional 40 gallon bath for 200 cow passes, usage three to six times per week, um, 20 to 25 pounds of copper sulfate and copper plus heel max, we're reducing it down to 12 to 15 pounds of copper. Chip, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the pH levels and how this? Sure. So basically, you keep it a lower pH and you actually you keep your, your copper actually more active. And I know there's a lot of guys that push the three, do not go below three, you're going to do damage. If a cow was standing in this foot bath for 10 to 12 hours a day, I would say, well, I, we might have to be concerned about that. You think about the couple seconds a day a cow is in a foot bath. It's, it's not doing any harm. If you think about your average chlorine dioxide teat dip, you're looking at a 2.7 to a 3.2 on a teat that is raw skin. So your low pH in a foot bath of a, of a 2 to a 3.3 for your few seconds is actually doing no damage. Um, there's a lot of myths out there, but this is something that, um, that there's no problem running a lower pH. If your cow was standing all day, I would say it would be a concern. It's definitely not a concern. It's your little bit of time is spent in there. It would be more dangerous to have an accidentally overfilled um, formaldehyde bath. <laughs> definitely. Or or too many passes to formaldehyde, even at the proper level, but too many passes, you're going to burn feet. Never seen, a, never seen a cow burn their feet from the pH. No, never. Uh, the other thing I'll add to this is we talk about hoof max. There's many different competitors out there with different acidifiers and stuff. And and that's all fine. It's competition makes everything better. But the difference with hoof max compared to some of your competitive brands is, is you're going to use a lot less. I mean, if I go to some of the competitors and they're going to say for this foot, same foot bath where we're talking of using 20 ounces, they're going to be using a gallon. So they might be thinking they're saving a little bit of money, but actually they're using two to three times, four times as much product in that same bath to keep it, you know, at the pH that they need to. So you got to know your products, know how to use them, and and figure out your cost per bath more than your cost per jug or your gallon. Okay. Durahuff. It's a one-step foot bath comp you know, concentrate. It combines copper and hoof max and a pre-mixed, easy to use solution. This is our liquid copper. All right, Durahoof is our liquid copper. We're running about a 20% copper sulfate solution in this. Uh, the usage on this bath is one to five days a week in rotation with heel max or formaldehyde. We say with that in rotation because we need to run something when we talked about the trial earlier, we talked about how many gallons of of copper we had to run, liquid copper to run to get the proper amount of a 5% solution. It's very difficult and costly. So we're going to run this and it's going to control foot rot. The nice thing about this is also it can be run in an organic. We have an organic solution of this. Um, so it does work well on foot rot. It's easy to mix. It can be left in a bath for 24 hours because it's it's got the hoof max in it, so it stands up very well to organic uh, matter. And uh, it's ideal for using with a Hager Chem foot bath system. And it works well in robots too, but uh, not this here. We're we're in ultra tunnel. This is a different one. We were, we were on the Dura. We can go into the ultra two and one and the ultra two and one four X now. Do you want to touch base on that, Aaron? Yes. yes. Uh, Ultra 2-in-1 and Ultra 2-in-1 4X are the, the same product, but the 4X is higher concentration, so that requires less handling, shipping, um, ordering, and with the increases of, of some of the other you know, shipping costs and stuff, it kept Ultra 2-in-1 um, at a reasonable price level to use, but it's the same product, just different concentrations. Um, it's a concentrated 
concentrate of formaldehyde and a powerful ionic copper solution containing Hofmax, which means that it has copper and um, the acidifier as well. Uh, traditional 40 gallon bath for 200 cow passes, usage of three to five baths per week. That's one of the nice things about Ultra Tool One is you can you can get by with less days per week. Uh, I do I do like the idea of more frequency, but if if it's not an option or not going to do it, Ultra Tool One is a great um, solution. Uh, Ultra Tool One Four X. We're looking at um, running eight percent, and with the regular Ultra Tool One, we're looking at running twelve percent as the baselines. Benefits fast ED control. I've seen this remove dermatitis from farms very, very quickly. The farmers are amazed at how fast um, delivers a synergistic effect for maximizing hoof hygiene results with one product and it's a liquid. We don't have to be doing measuring out different things to get the, the same effect. And it's ideal for use with the AgriChem foot bath dosing um, systems. And, you know, because it does have formaldehyde in it, it's better if we don't have people filling up buckets and being exposed to, to the formaldehyde. But being that it's a all in one liquid product in the foot bath dosing system, it works great and nobody's got to touch anything. Yes, and you, you've touched on most everything on this part here. Uh, this is something that um, you have to be careful using though. It's a, it's a very aggressive, it's a strong, quick working product, but it's something that I would hesitate in the robot barns. And definitely if I did, I would run it at a less solution um, because of the frequency of traveling to a foot bath to say it's going to be set up for 10, 12 hours, whatever it may be. Um, you'll be very, have to be careful about how many passes you're going to get a day. It's something when we talk about formaldehyde and, and burns, this is something that we would have to take into consideration. So if you're going to use this product, make sure whoever you're getting it from knows how to properly set up the product. If it works, everything's fine on it, but it's something that you want to make sure that the protocol is set up proper on. All right. Yeah, having having some formaldehyde, and I want to say that the formaldehyde smell in the area is not anywhere near the formaldehyde fumes of a regular formaldehyde bath. I, I think we're keeping them trapped in fairly well with our uh, uh, with, with with the surfactants and stuff we have added in on it. That's why it keeps the smell down a little bit less. Yes. Okay. Next slide. Five things that can jeopardize any foot bath results. Human error, um, improper foot bath size, according to the cows, lack of consistency, incorrect protocol, and unreasonable expectations. Everything. Let's, let's start with the first one, Aaron, and go through the human error. Um, yeah. Human error. I mean, if you watch people set up foot baths, how many times have you sit there and watched it and, and they put the product in and they stick the hose in, they fill it up and next thing you know, it's all running out while your products run pretty much out of the foot bath and it's sitting down in the alleyway or something. You'll see that or you'll see a foot bath that's half full or, you know, or the, the, they spilt half the product getting to the foot bath. And, you know, it's all those things. But it was a situation where the guy who fills a foot bath on one of my farms um, was moved up and then another guy came in and the new guy thought that he was doing a better job by filling the foot bath all the way up and that the other guy was lazy you know, he didn't realize that i had calculated out this many mm -hmm. inches and so he was diluting our product even more than it was supposed to be he actually thought he was doing a good job but that's an example of you know human error mm -hmm. exactly the 70 gallon instead of a 40 gallon makes a yeah. big difference in the protocol percentage hit drops tremendously yep so improper foot bath size. I don't believe that there's one size that fits any dairy, but you do need the correct size for the dairy. Uh, that's something you got to look at when we talk about foot bath size. I don't believe that one size fits all dairies. So that's something that we can go into further on um, down the road. But the big thing is lack of consistency. Is 
the herd getting done consistently? Is it on the, at right days? Is it getting changed when it should get changed? Them are the things you got to look at and say, how can we make this so it's so convenient that the consistency is equal, is, ta is, is done right? Your incorrect protocol. A lot of products fail because they were not set up to run correctly from the start. So when we talked about even with the heel max at a, at a two percent in the south and a three percent in the north, them are the things you got to look at and say, okay, that's there's a reason for that. It's the environment in the barn. So we have to set up the right protocol for the area. And then unreasonable expectations. You can go into a couple of them, Aaron. Uh, unreasonable expectations. Unreasonable expect any product to work with on a where the cow's hoof is in manure the step before or right after the foot bath. Doesn't matter what you're using. Again, we're, we've ruined our product to skin contact. Um, unreasonable to expect it to, to work. Think it, keeping things cleaned up outside of the foot bath out in the area um, or walking through standing in deep puddles. I drive past this farm where the cows are standing the lowest end of a pasture and it's up to their knees. It's unreasonable to expect any foot bath to prevent that. So that's where the whole farm and environment has to be taken into consideration um, when you're trying to prevent infectious lesions. Aaron, how about the fact of uh, a pre-bath? How many dairies you come across where they're still running a pre-bath of water a, for that? There was a, there was a trend um, about 18 years ago that that was thought mm -hmm. to maybe be a good thing because we're rinsing the hooves off and um it become discovered very quickly that it, it doesn't rinse the hoof off it just makes the foot wet before it goes in and if it we're saturates it product retention mm -hmm. if we've broke the surface tension if you if you dip a foot in in a product it's going to come out with that product on it if you dip a foot in product first and then or water first and then product, it's not gonna have a fraction of the water on it. If you jump in a pool twice, you're the same wetness. Yep. You got the same amount of water on you when you get out the second time as you had the first time. So we'll agree on no pre-bath. Yes. And Definitely. Yeah. Or rinsing your feet off right before they go into the bath. Rinse, you have guys it wet. Off and they, you know, yeah. and, and, and it wet, so it, it's gonna retain less product from the bath. Yes. All right, so how can we avoid this? Well, right here's a perfect example. We can avoid it. Right here is our advanced foot bath dosing systems. Um, right here, our FDS-8, this system, actually, you know, we can set it up many different ways. So you can turn it on manually if you want. Um, this dairy here on the right setup, that's a little shed outside, runs about 2,000 cows through that. We have one huge large foot bath that replenishes. So we're able to do all of the cows through one foot bath. Uh, it turns on automatically certain days of the week, and then um, it'll run and replenish and shut off automatically. They don't have to go in there except for to change the tote. That's all they go in there for. Uh, it can be set up many different ways. This system will actually run up to eight different baths. So if you have a few different baths set up in a dairy, most generally it's usually two baths, but it will do more. And it will run your baths, fill your baths, replenish your baths um, automatically or manually. So that's the nice thing about this system. Yeah, Chip, I want to um, answer one of the questions off to the side. I just noticed from um, Paul. Oh, it's, I did. Uh, what is the recommended weekly preventative running the foot bath? And this is completely based off of the situation. I have, for example, two farms that are digital dermatitis free. They're phenomenal farms. One of them runs the foot bath twice a week, three milkings on, three milking, or, and then three milkings off, and three milkings on, three milkings off. And I have another farm that runs another one of our products through this system seven days a week both milkings all the time at a much lower concentration level both of them having the exact same result both of them happy and their cost is low and their 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 lameness is extremely low and their milk production is good so it all depends on what product you're using and the whole overall outlook situation of the farm and environment the cows are in. 
Yes, and so something else to add on to this, when I talk about the replenishing, so say I'm, I've got a thousand cows at a dairy and I wanna change that every 250 cows. So I'd have four changes. Depending on the foot bath size, I could set that up so I can replenish, so I keep spiking that bath, so I don't have to change it. So I might take my cost from a 13 to 17 cents. Sometimes I see it up to 20 cents a cost per cow pass. I might get that down to a, a seven or eight cent. And you think about that. Well, what's seven or eight cents times a thousand and then times three or four days a week times 52 weeks a year, it adds up to thousands and thousands of dollars in savings and convenience on top of it. So them are the things you might want to look at a system for and nobody's handling this product. The foot bath is getting done correctly every time. Huge difference in results usually when we stick these systems in. Here we have this. Go ahead. Go ahead Jeff. Yep, the simple foot bath dosing system. Uh, we have a couple different versions of these. This is basically this, the base model right here. Um, the simple system basically is you just want to fill your bath. So you go up there and that green button right on the front, you just tap that bath. Tap it right there, push it, and it will fill one, two baths. This will do up to two different baths. Um, system this way you're not handling product you're getting consistency done and say this works at a lot of, you know, I have this set up from small dairies to large dairies and the reason is is that they flip between you know between groups their their foot baths say so they turn around and they just hit the button they can but run in the farms not are not always ready at a certain time for automation to yes be running right. at the time this is where it's a good benefit and a lot of the smaller farms it's the same people have to do field work as milking yep. and um so this is good alternative for those farms that can't always be ready at the same time no one's handling product no one's having to worry about consistent water levels in your foot bath it just gets done correctly every time push the button consistency is we're talking about consistency that's, that's consistency, consistency and and the time of standing there to fill a foot bath yes exactly it's time for questions we have any questions